Hello, my name is Ken Wright. In this presentation, we will be addressing zero-point energy, more commonly known as the vacuum of space, or vacuum energy. In a previous presentation, we talked about the 19th century belief of scientists that since all waves in nature have a medium, there must be a medium for light waves, which they call the ether. If the ether existed, then the Earth would be plowing through it as it travels around the Sun, and the Sun moves around the galaxy. Thus, there should be a detectable ether wind. We talked about the famous Michelson-Morley experiment to discover the ether, which unfortunately proved unsuccessful, and Einstein eliminating the concept of an ether in his theory of relativity. But scientists now know that space is not empty at all. There is a turbulence of energy that fills all space. In science of today, we call energy sources fields. There are many different kinds of fields, and here are just a few. Some fields are what we would call in physics classical. Others belong to the quantum world and there are different mathematics associated with fields. There has been an effort to create a unified field theory that ties all of these different fields together into a single field. But as of this date, the effort has not been successful. In fact, there's not even a very good definition of what an energy field is. For example, Fields have physical reality. They occupy space. They extend throughout space. Fields eliminate a true vacuum. They contain energy. They have a value for every point in space and time. Well, these statements don't exactly inspire one's vision to what a field really is. But this sounds like an effort to reestablish the missing ether. For example, the ether was described as a physical reality, occupying space, extending throughout space, having quantity, eliminating a true vacuum. But the ether was not light, just the medium for light, and a very rigid medium with a fixed position. But the quantum vacuum is light. It has been called the base state of light. Well, is the quantum vacuum the medium through which light waves travel? If this is the case, then light is its own medium for light waves, just as water is its own medium for water waves. This scientist, Hal Putoff, who studied this for years, made the following statement. With its roots in relativity theory, which banished the ether, quantum electrodynamics has in some sense come full circle to provide us with a model of an energetic vacuum that once again constitutes a plenum rather than a void. A plenum in physics is defined as all space being filled with something that is substantive. So we are now recognizing that there is an ether of sorts that fills the universe, just not the one originally hypothesized. In a total vacuum at absolute zero temperature, there still exists an enormous energy. This great scientist, Hendrik Casimir, theoretical physicist, became famous for predicting vacuum energy in an experiment known as the Casimir effect. Take two uncharged metal plates or mirrors, put them in a vacuum box at absolute zero temperature. In such a state, there should absolutely be no motion whatsoever. But there is, because all the wavelengths of vacuum energy are pushing against the outside of these plates, while only the very shortest wavelengths 
can get in between the plates. This produces an imbalance of force or a vacuum between the plates, causing inward pressure. Bernard Hayes, astrophysicist and editor of the Astrophysics Journal for 10 years, made the following statement. There exists a background sea of quantum light filling the universe. And if you add up all these ceaseless fluctuations, you get a background sea of light whose total energy is enormous. This is the electromagnetic zero-point field. These two scientists calculated that there is enough such energy in the vacuum of a light bulb to boil all the world's oceans. Think of that. As previously stated, the famous Michelson-Morley experiment failed to find the ether wind. But there is enormous vacuum energy out there. And they didn't detect the vacuum energy either. There are a lot of things which by searching we haven't found. As shown in previous presentations, we haven't detected 95% of the theorized universe. What is this vacuum of space that is filled with so much energy? Is this the power of the infinite God utilized in all of his creations? In the introduction to these presentations, I quoted that which I regard as scripture from a volume of scripture called The Doctrine and Covenants. These verses pertain to a spiritual light called the light of Christ, which is the power of all creation. A light which gives both light to our eyes and inspiration and guidance to our minds. Which light proceedeth forth from the presence of God to fill the immensity of space. The light which is in all things which giveth life to all things, which is the law by which all things are governed, even the power of God who sitteth upon his throne, who is in the bosom of eternity, who is in the midst of all things. Whatever the quantum vacuum or zero-point energy is, as the base state of light, with its immense life-giving energy, it is my personal faith that it is part of the light of Christ as defined in these scriptural verses that match so well the things that science has discovered. In the next presentation, we will be discussing the mysterious quantum entanglement, one of the greatest mysteries in all of science.